Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the linear algebra. Today we will discuss about the basis and the dimension of vector space. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. In this lecture, we will see how you can find the basis and the dimension of the vector space, which is discretized into the two categories, like of the here. The first category is where you have to find the dimension and the basis of this Ws are there where some condition is imposed on that you can see you have to find all those four pairs a b c d such that this condition must satisfied again this is such conditions are here so the type one is consists of all those questions which are some condition are here however on this type two we have to find the basis and the dimension of the vector space or the subspace w in which there is no condition imposed on that so let's firstly discuss how you can solve such kind of the problems and then we will see later on how you can solve this type 2. First of all, what is the basis are there? So if uh, V is your vector space over the field F, then you can consider any of the subset of the V that is called as the basis if and only if these two conditions are satisfied. That is this S must be a linear independent and the span of the S is V. All of you know that what is the span of that? It means if you take any element of from the V then it must be written in terms of the elements of the S. Every element of V is a light, uh, written as a linear combinations of the elements of S. So we already discussed these two lectures in my last, that is you can see the linear span combinations and the linear independence lectures are there, where you can see the various methods in order to solve such problems are there. So all are available in the channel name Dr. Harishkar, Mathematics 2 is the playlist. So you must watch these two lectures before understanding this today's lecture. Once you will prove that S is my basis, then my question arises is how you can find the dimensions. So if you have proved that S is a basis, it means it satisfies the two properties. One is the linear independent and second is the span. Then how many elements are involved in this, in this S? If it consists of the finite number of the elements, then we call as the finite dimensions. And the number of the elements of this S is called as the dimension of the vector space. It is denoted as DIM of V. If you are unable to find any of the finite subset, then it is called as the infinite dimension space. For example, so assume that this is my basis. So firstly, you have to prove that it's a LI and the span. It is clearly seen that it's a LI and the span. Now, what is the dimension of the V? How many elements are there? You can see this is the first element, this is a comma, this is the first element, this is the second polynomial. So there are the two polynomials, so that's why it's a dimension is two. This is a one vector, this is the second vector, so that's why dimension is my two. We will denote it P of n is a set of all those polynomials of degree less than or equal to n like here. And V of n is a n dimensional vector space like what is a V2? V2 is nothing but my R2 that is a xy plane. What is a V3? V3 represent for my R cube that is a xy z plane R and this is my xy here. Now, once you are here, then what are the basis of this? What is the coefficient of the a0 is the symbol by 1, x and x raised to power n. How many elements are there? This is n plus 1. What are the basis of this is? The first, this is the identity matrix. What is the i matrix of the n cross n? This is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 and so on. And this is 0, 0, 1 is there. And dimension is my n. Remember that whenever this is a polynomial of the p n, the dimension is my n plus 1. How you can prove that whether the basis S is a is a basis or not? You have I just simply tell you a shortcut quicks. If you have find that the dimension of the S is greater than of the V, then it is not a basis. Why? Because in that case S is not Li. We already discussed in the Li lecture what will happen if number of the elements in the R, like say if I consist of the this one vector, two and the three vectors over the R2. Now what is the dimension of the R2 is my 2. How many elements are there? 3. So it is not a Li. So it means this is not a basis. If you have proved that it is a less than, uh, it is a, if it is equality, then it could be the basis provided you just simply prove S is Li only. There is no need to prove that S is a span. However, if you are able, given that dimension of the S is greater than of the V, then you have to prove the both the things are S is Li and the span of the S is my V. So remember these beautiful tips for you to get the shortcut one. For example here, so what is the dimension of this P2? 3. 
what is the dimension of this is 1 2 and 3 so since both are equal so it means there is enough to prove that it is a basis when s is li if it is not li then it is not a basis how you can prove that it is a base li so you can consider the three alpha scalars such that here then your target is to prove alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 are zero if they are zero then we can say it's a li if at least one of them is a non zero then we call it the ld now how you can equate you can equate the coefficients of the polynomial x here x and the constant r there now from here you can clearly see is alpha 1 is 0 if you substitute here you will get minus alpha 2 plus 2 alpha 3 is 0 and from here you will get this value now if you add them what will happen if you add them you will get 4 alpha 3 is 0 it means alpha 3 is 0 once alpha 3 is 0 you can substitute here you will get alpha 2 is also 0 therefore alpha 2 is 0 alpha 1 0 alpha 3 0 it means this is li and then yes it is a basis now we can see how you can solve the type 1 where some condition is imposed on the problem so let's discuss all these problems are here find the basis and the dimension of this w that trick is very simple but you can do is from this whatever the relation is given to you you can find either x1 or x2 or x3 you can find any of the values are there now i can find the value of the x1 because it's quite easy now i can substitute this value of the x1 as here you will get this expression now you can see all the expressions are written in the form of the x2 and x3 now you can equate the coefficients in the first part what is the coefficient of the x3 x2 that's a 3 comma what is the coefficient of the x2 is here 1 what is the coefficient of the x2 here that's a nothing is 0 same for the x now these two elements are are my basis and this x2 and x3 are called as the independent vectors or independent elements are there. so the basis are my here now you can find the dimensions dimension is my two so this is the way you can solve such kind of the problem in a very simple two or three steps are there look at the one more example so again this condition is given to you now you have to solve the two problems simultaneously so from here can you find the value of the x1 you can easily find the value of the x1 instead of substituting this x1 here firstly we have to solve these two problems i can substitute the value of the x1 here you will get this expression now you can simplify these these values after the simplification you will get this one now this is the x3 in terms of the x2 so our target is to write here i can substitute this x3 here you will get this now you can see I can express the x1 in terms of the x2, x3 in terms of the x2. Now I can substitute both the values at here. You will see this expression. Now x2 can be common. So there is only one element. So the dimension is my 1 and the basis is only w. Look at the another one is there where your target is to find the basis and dimension of w1, w2 as well as their intersection. So since it is a polynomial of degree at the most 3, so firstly we can write like here. So let's start with the w1. Can you find the value of the f1 from here? Yes, you can easily find this is a plus b plus c plus d. So I can substitute the value as here. Now again, you can find either as a value of the a or b or c or d. That's depending upon you. So I can find the value of the a. I can substitute the value of a as here. You can write this way. Now all the expressions are written in the terms of the B, C, D. So I can take the coefficients of the B, C and D are there. So you can see what is the coefficient of the B, my X cube and so on. So these are my basis and the independent vectors are my three. So B, C, D are my independents and these are my basis. Similarly for the W2, so your target is to find the F dash. What is the F dash is there? This is a 3X square plus 2BX plus of c can you find f dash of 1 yes this is 3a plus 2b plus of c so i can substitute here so from here can you find the value of the b a this is my this or you can find the value of the b that's upon your choice or you can find the value of the c that's on your choice now since c is quite easier calculation as upon, apart from the fraction so i can find the value of c substitute the value of the c here you will get this now equate the coefficients in terms of the a and b 
you will get this as my base state. Now you can see the coefficient of the d is my 1, so it's, it's a 1 is there. Similarly, how you can find the intersection? What is the meaning of the intersection is? And. So I can write these two pairs as. Now I can take these values. Now firstly, we have to solve these two problems simultaneously. We can find the value of the c from here and substitute the value c in here. So I can substitute the value c here. Now I can write the c in terms of the a, b. So I can solve them and here c in terms of the a, b. So I can express the d also in terms of the a, b as here. Now you can see I can substitute the c and d here. You will get this. Now all the expressions are written in terms of the a and b. So your target is to write like here. So you can see there are the two elements. So the bases are my two and the dimension is also my two. Look at the another are there. So again, you have to write the w1, w2 and their intersection. So again from here, you can find the value of the b or c or d. That's depending upon you. So since b is quite easier, so I can write the value of b. Substitute the value of the b here, you will get this. All the elements are written in terms of the c and d. So I can write a, c and d. So these three are my bases and the dimension is my 3. Similarly, we can start from the w2. Since a is equal to d, b is equal to c, so I can substitute the values at here. So you can see these are the 2 are my bases, dimension is my 2. How you can find the intersections are there? So since it is a and, so I can write these two pairs simultaneously. Now since a is equal to d, b is equal to c, you can substitute the value here. So b is equal to c, I can substitute here. You can see this will be cancelled out. So it becomes a d as a 0. Once d is equal to 0, since a is equal to d, so what is the meaning of that? a and d both are 0. I can substitute all the values at here. So you can see there is only one independent variables. And this is my basis are there. So the dimension is my 1 is here. So this is the way you can solve this type 1 example. I hope you can simply learn in a very simple manner. We will see in the next class how you can solve the problem for the type 2 when there is no condition imposed on the vector space. How you can solve that we will discuss on the next class. Till then you can simply follow this playlist Mathematics 2 channel name Dr. Harish Garg where you can find the various videos related to the vector space R. You all can find upon this channel name Dr. Harris. Till then, best of luck students. Happy learning.